everybody. I wanted to go ahead and join our Kiwi collaboration for this month. And it is with the Beauty in Bloom February Kiwi Club kit. And the papers are really beautiful. Um, they're very florally. They have a lot of the cherry blossom and butterfly and everything tones to them and you know pinks. I am not a pink person, so you'll have to kind of bear with me on some of this because I really don't like pink. But um, I do think I can do a good monochromatic scheme with this using these tones because they're not a true pink. They're more of a blush or coral. So I think if I bring in a little bit of the orange side to that tone, I'm gonna be okay. So I'm going to actually bring in some basil solid tones and like I said that coral and peach kind of tone and I think that's gonna blend really well with this set and keep it kind of monochromatic um, with these tones then the other thing is I am NOT going to use these two patterns and because I want to kind of stay with that monochromatic theme again and I think these are just a little bit too much for what I want to accomplish or what idea I kind of have in my head. If I need to throw in something that's going to add a better contrast with the whites, I may throw this one with the butterflies back in, um, but I haven't decided quite yet on that because I don't really think on this set that there is, well, that one might work. Uh, that would be a good contrast there and it throws a little yellow in. So I just need to make sure I have enough of a whitish kind of blend so that I can come between two patterns like this with a nice break in my tones. And I think this one with the blue will do a break very nicely as well. So if I do that, I think that'll work very well as, as well. And I don't think I'm going to go with the blue or the cream on these patterns. I think I like this tone better. And then what I'm also going to do is come in, if I need to, with a heavier accent in this blue. And I might go ahead and do a double photo mat with a very, very thin border of this blue just to kind of pop my pictures a little bit. I think that will work out very nicely. So that's kind of where I'm going and what I have in mind. Uh, the template sets for this pair with Clara Lane and I'm gonna try the garden frills. You're gonna probably have to bear with me because I'm gonna have to cut these because I haven't pre-done anything to this time. So it might take me a while to cut them. <laughs> so bear with me on that. And I might do some of the accents for this. Uh, again, I haven't quite decided how in depth I'm gonna do these borders and how much of the flowers and everything else I'm gonna use. It. I'm gonna try and kind of sway this theme towards more of a Valentine's feel. So I think, again, that's where I'm gonna head with this and go more into that. And I think I'm gonna throw in uh, the Tiny Sweetheart set or the home set. But I, I think I like the Tiny Sweetheart set. I think I'm gonna throw that one in and the regular Sweetheart set. I know they're older templates, and I believe this regular Sweetheart set isn't available anymore, but I do think Tiny is still available. But I think that's where I wanna focus. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start designing with this. And then if I think of any little tidbits along the way, I'm gonna try and pop them in, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Oh, I like that. Um, no, not wedding. Not life. Friend, maybe. Spring, no. Curious memories of family. No, write it on your heart. Springtime smiles, no. Butterfly, no. Cherry blossom, no. Five things I love about you. One fine day is cute. I love you with all my heart. Yes, because this should fit. Not quite within that one. And not quite within that one either. So we'll have to kind of wing that one. We'll see how that goes. 
Okay. So I think those are the ones I'll use for that. Alrighty, I'm gonna put these aside because these are so tiny, I don't want to lose them. And I know I will. So let's put them back in their folder. And start going. Ah, another thing I know I want is my 100% go-to every time, gotta have it, lovely scallops. I think I'm gonna do a top border of this and then do a strip border on the bottom anchoring this set. So I think that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. All right, so cut that. And I think I'm gonna go with... I think I like those two. So let's go with those two. Anchor it with that and then do that on the top. Okay, and then I think what I'm gonna do there is, so you can see kind of where my design is going. I'll do this. So I'm gonna go ahead. Now, this one again is gonna be one of those to where I can't flip this template. It's not flippable. So uh, that's gonna be fun and interesting. And then this one here is. So I'll do, I think I'll do this as my top, this is my bottom, and this as a strip here, and then my border up here. So I'm gonna do this border like that, like that. And then so you can see it. Oh, do, 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 do. Uh, funky, funky, funky paisley strips. Okay, so here's my strips. And just so you can see how I'm gonna anchor that look. I'm gonna do this stripe down here with these two, like that. Okay, so that's kind of how it's gonna look. And then, photo mats, photo mats, photo mats. Okay, let's see what we wanna do with photos. Uh, let's change it up a little bit and go with four by fives. How about that? Let's do four by five. Four by five, and then do, let's see, let's go four by five here, and then do, change it up from my normals here and go four by four, four by four, and four by four. And maybe add in some smaller blocks. Let's see. Uh, maybe do like a three by three here. Yeah, something different. Okay. Let's start with that. See how that goes. And then bring in my sweetheart here. And maybe something over here. I might flip this one over to here as well. Yeah. All right, I think I like that. And then I'm gonna put in these guys. I might swap out here. And then five things I love about you there or put that one up here okay like so yep all right use those two okay I still want to I'm gonna try and get this one in I'm gonna find a way of how to get this one in I will probably get it in there somehow okay so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do that's what I've got running, and let's go. Okay, so we want this one to be the main Clara. So we need it to be roughly that. I'm going to cut my paper in half first. 
so that I'm working with a six inch wide by 12 inch strip for this base here. And I'm, I'm kind of doing a little bit different than what a lot of people will do because you want to save your paper and you want to do that. But I also want to have a little bit more play and I can always cut this off and cut this off and use the strips or however I want to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start this way and see where that takes me. Because again, I just, I want to have a little bit more room. And I know that one side of this template is going to have to be condensed a little bit to fit because of the way this template is designed. And my scissors have gone AWOL. Where are my Fiskars? Scissors. Hmm. Do, 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 do. This is why I keep multiple pairs. <laughs> okay. All right. I think to, um, I'm debating if I want to ink this in a brown or in a brighter tone or a brighter color. Um, I'm kind of going back and forth on that one because, yeah, see, ah, I knew that was gonna happen. See, this is not matching up this way. And I kind of knew that was gonna happen. Mm, I don't like that. I don't wanna go down much farther. So, I may have to, well, I may have to suck it up is what it may come down to, okay. May just have to suck it up. Okay, so this one should have been a little bit bigger on that side. Hmm. That's all right. Okay, let's just go with the flow and see where it takes us. Okay. To those of you that haven't done any of my videos before, I, when I do stripes, I never cut this way. I always cut what I call a cut across the green, which is so that you can actually see the horizontal striping occurring in your strips. Striping occurring in your strips, say that a couple times. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this way. I'm gonna make sure too though that my pattern on the opposite side is not something that I need to worry about directionally, which it isn't, so I'm all set there. Measure it out. I'm gonna go ahead and do half inch strips. If I want quarter inch strips, if I want them or need them a little bit smaller, I can always come back and get another set of strips and adjust it as I need them. Okay. Now I want to go and get my scallops. And normally I tell people you don't have to follow this edge like don't always adjust it to the paper and, and you know keep edge to edge like that and use this as a guide you can make it shorter or you can make it longer whichever suits your purpose but for this layout I do kind of like where the sizing is at for that so I am gonna go ahead and do it that way Everybody does their scallops differently. This is kind of personally how I like to do it. Some people like to do it a different way so that they have the negative scallop. But to me, I don't ever use that. So I would rather save and conserve a little bit more paper by doing um, edge to edge this way. Now, let me mark where I need to cut straight across here. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and cut straight across like that. OK. 
Okay. So I'm going to go in. I do my scallops a little bit differently when I'm cutting. And the reason why I do this is because for me, it's easier and I find myself cutting better circles to kind of come in from both sides. Otherwise, what I find myself doing is when I try and cut this corner and move my scissors this way, I tear this and I don't like that. I like to have a nice point there. And then the other thing that I always find myself doing is if I'm cutting a semicircle in just one direction, I tend to have one side that is like a really long or a nice curve and then the other one is like a shorter, weird kind of angled curve, which I know sounds kind of weird, but it, it's not perfect kind of on both sides. It's not perfectly rounded. And some people like that, some people don't. I'm a very symmetrical person and I want both sides of that curve to relatively be the same uh, arc. So I'm kind of angled that way. So it takes a little bit more time doing it this way, but I like the results a lot better. And Quite honestly, I have done it for so long this way that it's really a habit now. It was very awkward at first when I was teaching myself to do it so that I could come into these points and get these points really nice and sharp and crisp. And now it just quite honestly is completely second nature. And doing it any other way, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. But you can do whatever you want. I mean, there's no real tried and true rule. Although I did see something the other day where we were kind of having a discussion in the Play to Create group where everybody was talking about like how you cut with your scissors and which side you use it on, which, or do you cut on the outside of the line, the inside of the line, and does it really matter? And some people say yes, some people say no. And that is totally perfect and totally fine but if you have ever played, and you'll notice I'm left-handed, if you've ever played with true quote-unquote left-handed scissors, what you'll notice on the scissors, and I'm gonna kind of digress a little bit here, is that the blade here, there's a flat side that you cut against, and then there's a beveled side that actually creates the cut and pushes the paper to the cut. And what winds up happening is one of the side of the paper goes up against this and kind of tends to bend this way and then the other kind of side of the paper comes on this side. And what you find that happens is when you're cutting to the wrong side of your image, see how this way I'm cutting to that flat side or as I call it, the wall, um, on the outside of my cut line, it kind of creates a much sharper edge here than when you're cutting this way to where the outside of your edge is on the quote unquote opposite side of the wall. If you were to actually, and I know it sounds kind of stupid because you can cut your finger, but if you were to put your finger there, you kind of notice the edge is a little bit sharper on the top and this one is a little bit duller because it's getting pushed down. It's not that big of a deal because today's scissors are so much sharper than they used to be but some types of scissors it does still matter because of how the scissors are designed and a good example of that is the tim holtz tonic scissors because the red handle ones and this is not true with the black ones but the red handle ones on one side if you look really carefully and i don't know if you can see it on this but if you look really carefully this is a serrated edge if you flip these scissors over this edge is not this is a completely straight edge. And what that is for and why it's designed that way is these scissors are designed to be self-sharpening. The same way a lot of kitchen shears and those types of scissors are, one edge is serrated and the other edge is not. Because when they go together against each other, they self-sharpen. I mean, it doesn't work perfectly because they do eventually get dull anyways, especially if you're cutting really thick products. But um, that's why they're designed that way. And you'll notice when you're cutting with those scissors, depending on which wall you have and which edge you're cutting with down on the bottom and down on the top, or 
towards the inside of your cut or towards the outside of your cut, that edge will get fuzzy. One edge will be smooth and straight and the other side will be kind of fuzzy with those scissors. So it, that's just something that I've noticed over the many years of working with scissors and doing things. I personally have trained myself to use the right-handed scissors and so I cut backwards, but I've, adop I've adapted, not adopted, <laughs> I've adapted to doing that. So it works for me. But it's always all about what works for you. So if something else works for you, then by all means, do it your way, please. All right. Um, getting all my scraps because I make a mess when I scrapbook. I'm trying to keep it clean. Okay. So there. Uh, did I have it that one that way or did I have this one that way? Um, I don't remember which way I had it. I think it was that way. So it's that, and then, okay, this one's done, so this can go out. So now comes the fun part. These, again, they're not going to, um, they're not gonna do this. So I'm going to, because you're not splitting this template, I'm gonna put it up as high as I can here, because I'm not gonna use this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally not gonna use that on an opposite or a negative cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and justify that as high up as I can. I'm gonna give myself a little tiny bit of space on the bottom side that you can see this space here, just in case I wanna do like a heart or something out of this specific pattern. I don't know if this tiny sweetheart will fit, but we'll see. No, not quite, but that's okay. And then I don't know how much underneath here that I am or I'm not gonna use, so I am going to kind of work that out. I'm gonna cut this first. Oh gosh, this is gonna be fun. Um, hmm. <laughs> Which direction do I start from? I'm gonna start from this way, because I'm gonna go ahead and try and do a continuous cut, but we'll see how that goes. It's not going to be friendly with it. Yeah, this is not going to be friendly. So I'm not going to be able to save any of this because of the way I'm going to have to cut this. So while it's a beautiful template, it's probably going to take me a while to cut out. So from this point, I'm going to probably be quiet, fast forward for a little bit, and maybe put on some music. got both of those cut and as you can see in my example in, in the video I switched to using an exacto knife and honestly it came out much better a uh, little bit of hardness on my hands because you know I'm arthritis and holding an exacto blade can get kind of tedious um, but in the long run much easier to cut than try and get those angles on the scissors. I, they just, it was not gonna happen. So from that perspective, yeah, that definitely needs to be done on a, with an X-Acto knife. So and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm like, I'm probably gonna make it a little bit skinnier depending on how that goes. 
like so. And like so, okay? Like that. I really don't like this, but there's really not much I'm going to change uh, with that. There's not no getting around it in that regard. So, all right, now make sure I have the right template going to the right one. Which one? This is Claroline 1A. I've, I've messed this up before and put the wrong thing on the wrong template. This is 1B. Okay, so this goes to B. And that goes to A. Okay, so I'm right. Okay, and all set. All set there. All's well that ends well. Okay. Now, again, I don't quite know how I want to, what color ink I want to use to distress this on my edges. So I'm going to kind of play with that just a little bit. I'm going to take this piece here as an example, and I'm going to see how it looks in that brown. Okay, I like it. Not bad. Of course, it's always gonna it's always gonna blend. And then I want to see what it's gonna look like if I use a red-ish color. Okay. Um. Let's see, worn lipstick. Do I have worn lipstick up here? No, which one is this one? This is Picked Raspberry. That's awfully pink, though. Well, let's try it and see first and see how I like it. Picked Raspberry is a little bit on the pinkish side. So, not bad, though. I mean, that wouldn't be a bad color. It's a little bit on the purple side. So, that's a possibility. I think warm lipstick might be a little bit better because I think it has a little bit more orange in it. So let's see how warm lipstick does, shall we? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that one's popping up a lot better, I think. I mean,. This one's a little bit more pink on the purple range. This one is a little bit more orange. And of course the brown is what the brown is. And I think the brown is darkening it more than what I want. So I'm gonna go with worn lipstick. And also I think because of the darkness too, I'm also going to go ahead and give myself a little bit of room on darkness to kind of take away the pencil marks as best I can and if you didn't see from one of my last videos I do recommend this white rubber eraser from Pentel um, it works so much better than any other eraser I have ever tried a lot of people swear by the gum erasers I personally can't stand that brand but again personal personal preference on what everybody likes using. I have just found the Pentel polymer works exactly the way I want it to, and I'm happy with the results that I get from it. And it takes away everything I want it to take away. And if you have a caterpillar, you will notice sometimes when you're working with your caterpillar that the bar can put off a kind of a uh, it kind of looks like a pencil mark but it responds like a chalk but this eraser will actually take it off of your paper so if you ever get like a little gray splotch of something when you're using your caterpillar this takes it off so it's kind of like a, a residue from the steel moving on the steel on the bar when the grease breaks down, it leaves kind of like a powdery substance. So, again, this is not something I always do. 
erasing lines is not something I tell everybody because you usually can hide all of this with your inks. But since I'm not using brown, I'm using pink, I think that's going to show through more than what I want it to. So, better safe than sorry. I'm just going ahead and taking it off. I am being careful to go against my points. So if I've got a point pointing down like this, I'm not pushing against the point here, I'm actually pulling down to it so that I don't accidentally inadvertently bend it. And then I'm also gripping right next to where I'm using my eraser because I don't want to accidentally pull too hard and rip my paper because it is paper and paper's delicate. Okay, uh, go ahead and do this. Oops, see, I kind of marked that up a little bit takes it right off there's another you can kind of see that's another little scuff mark that you get from that cutter and so you just take that eraser right to it and it takes it right off so just a little bit of grit ah uh, yeah I like this color much better okay I think this is gonna go with the darker coral that I'm gonna put down as my photo mat I think it's gonna really accent that by using this color. And I'm staying within that really nice monochromatic feel. Yep, I likes it. I likes it. Mikey likes it. All right, that line's probably getting old, y'all. <laughs> I know, but you know, I'm a kid from the 80s, what can I say? All right, oops, drop that on there. That's not gonna matter because it's on the backside. I'm trying to work a little bit faster because I know my videos can kind of get pretty long. So sorry about that, especially when I'm not pre-planned or pre-done anything. I'm bad at that. For those that know me know that me and my planning schedule, yeah, not nah, doesn't work. <laughs> sorry, I'm probably doing that off, off camera again. Um, for those of you who also wonder how you kind of get into these tight spots. There's a couple of different ways to do it. I don't know if you've seen my videos on it before, but if you bring your sponge from the backside and you kind of push it in there, you'll notice that the sponge kind of conforms to that point and gets in there. Or you can just be like me and just absolutely not care if they get a blob in that corner edge at all. And another thing that you can do is you can get the succinct succinco yeah i think that's how they're how they're pronounced or the fantastic daubers and they are they look like this fantastic from succinco i think or yeah whatever brand makes them and you can put ink on the edges of these and then get into they work kind of like a paintbrush they bend a little bit and you can get into those corners and edges but again it's all preference you can also go down to Dollar Tree and you can get a nope that one's got color on it I don't want to do that <laughs> give me that you can get a little eye makeup brush and put color on it just the same way and then that will get you into those spots really nicely See how that's kind of getting in there on the sides where I wanted it and kind of, you can accent that a little bit if you want to. Entirely up to you. Again, I personally don't mind the little blobs because it gives a character. But there's always another way, okay? This is a really juicy, pad here so I'm getting lots of good color on here also one of the things that I'm doing too um, that you really honestly probably shouldn't do is I'm inking over my paper here and I don't know if you can see it and I'll try and pull it up to the camera a little bit but there are little flecks of the dauber when the dauber breaks down because it is a spongy material and it's they're cheap you, they're, you, you, they are what they are they're cheap but they break apart and they get these little itty bitty flecks. And if I were to just brush this off, those flecks have ink in them, so they would actually mark my page. So I'm gonna kind of go in and 
blow them off as best I can. This one's kind of being stubborn, so it left a little tiny itty bitty thing, but I think I have a picture going there, so it's not gonna matter too much. But um, again, I probably should move my page and then do my inking so that that doesn't happen. Okay, again, when you're working with these templates and you're, you're working with Kiwi Lane, please don't get really, really worried and stress out over about if you didn't get this circle perfect or you know your cuts don't line up exactly and honestly unless you are looking at your layouts with a magnifying glass later on or you are you know a little bit OCD which I know I am and a lot of my friends are um it really it's not going to be matter it's not going to matter you're not going to see it the ink is going to give it a, a nice little grayed feel and and blended feel so it's not going to be as pronounced of an issue as as you really think it might be so don't stress okay again when it comes to strips i still take the time to go with this angle and not this way because i want to try and save my daubers and make them last as long as i possibly can because again i'm cheap and i even though these are cheap tools i still want my tools to last as long as I can possibly get them to. Another thing that you can do if you're on a budget and you don't have 50 daubers or one dauber to each color like what I do, what you can do is every time you use these, especially with the Tim Holtz, Tim Holtz is water soluble. It's, you put water onto this and it's gonna fade and dissolve this color. So, what you can do is literally rinse these out and clean out the dauber sponge because again, it's a sponge. So take that into consideration. Okay, that's gonna be this one. Oops, I forgot the scallops. Okay, and again, getting in here. Also, how hard you hit your paper with a dauber is how much ink you're gonna lay down. If I'm just very lightly brushing this, you can see it's just a light, light amount of color. If I'm hitting this hard, it's a lot deeper of a color. If I hit it more of an angle, I get more of that little shade. If I hit it straight up and down, I just get that edge. So play with your daubers and find you know what kind of look works for you. I like to have a really dark edge with a lot of feathering into it. So I tend to really pounce my, my daubers into my ink pads, which you really don't need to do with Distress Ink. A little bit really does honestly go a long way. And once you've been using your daubers like this one, I've used this for a very long time, there is a lot of ink in here. So I honestly could probably have inked almost all of these pages and not hit it onto the ink pad. But because I like that See here, I, I won't even touch the ink pad with this one. I'll go all the way around it without even hitting my ink pad. But I like to have that really dark line and really deep tone of the ink. So I tend to just kind of daub and pounce it almost every other flick that I do. But you see, there was plenty of ink on there just to do that whole thing. So again, that's good, that's good, that's good. Missed one here. And again, I'll try not to hit the ink too much with this one, but I do want it to match that, so I am gonna, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna ink it, sorry. Just puts down a little bit more color and I need it to match, so. <laughs> again, there's that OCD. Okay, and everything's gotta look the same. Okay. And again, I really don't care if I get a little bit more of a blended splooch there because I like that look. I think it adds a lot of different character to my pieces. Okay. Just like so. Alrighty. So that's there. And done. Now I'm gonna go ahead, before I put my photos down, I'm gonna put my borders down and kind of together. And it, I'm just gonna take this one. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna put, 
Where's my, ugh, I'm wrapping up on it. Dang it, ugh, come on. Let go, there we go. Sometimes when you work with this adhesive, it wraps on itself. Okay, there we go. I'm putting it down here on the very bottom. And I'm actually gonna go in here and erase this part right there because I know I'm gonna dip down a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna dip down a lot. I need to get rid of that one, okay. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come down as low to that as I can. Man, I've got a lot of areas I need to fiddle with. Okay, I'll get that. Get that there. Mm, like so. All right, I think I can handle that. Okay, now you'll notice because of the way that I did that, because of how much I wanted here and how much I wanted here, this is not perfectly square. That's okay. Okay, it's don't don't stress that. You can cut that off and, and square up your layouts later. Just like in quilting, you can, you know, re-square your pieces. So don't stress over that. I'm gonna put the top on. I always only put adhesive on the tops here, just in case when I put it down, I wanna tuck anything underneath. Again, that's just something tip-wise that, you know, I've picked up doing with Kiwi Lane because I like tucking. So when I'm doing these kinds of things, I only ever put adhesive on like that. My strips, I will go ahead and do adhesive all the way down. And I know it sounds crazy, but I don't put adhesive, I don't just run adhesive all the way down here because you don't need to. You only need a touch of adhesive every now and then. And even though you're skipping, only skipping like half an inch to an inch worth of adhesive, in the long run, it's actually gonna save you quite a bit of adhesive. So keep that in mind when you're using your adhesives on how you run them. Because I know adhesive's not cheap, guys. It is not, 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 not cheap. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing. And for this purpose, I am going to put my adhesive all the way down on the sides because I want the sides to really hold on my paper. And then I'm going to kind of go over where the two pieces join just to give it a lot of stability there. And then I'm going to come in and just again, I'm going to tack this bottom part because I want to make sure I get that pretty good. Okay, and then go down and measure in my corners and get my lines. Okay. And that's going to go like that. Take that out. Then do the same. Oh, you know what? That looked pretty too. Oh, I didn't think about doing it that way. Look at that. That's kind of cool. Food for thought food for thought for next time. Okay, so when I put it down on here, I had to really erase a lot of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on this one instead this time. Because some of you might not have adhesive as, as forgiving as what ATG can kind of be. Okay, so I want to make sure, I'm going to take this one up a little bit. I want to make sure I want to put this and give myself that same kind of gap and space on this as the other one has. So like it's got a little bit more looks like. But I also gotta be careful. Yeah, see I was afraid of that. Okay. I gotta be careful because of this angle here. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda jimmy it that way. That's pretty close. It needs to be a little tiny bit skinnier. Gosh, honey, that happy medium is not easy on this one, is it? Okay, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna call it good. <laughs> not gonna fight it. I'm gonna call it good. Okay. The, yeah, see, I barely, barely made those two. So again, I'm gonna come all the way down on the sides with my adhesive. And then I'm gonna tack the two places together and then get my bottom strip. Okay. And line it up. And again, these two are not gonna join. 
as well as I would normally like them to, but I think with this one, that's kind of not gonna be able to be avoided. Okay, stay. Okay, now this, I'm gonna go ahead, put these two together, because I want to roughly get the same distance from the bottom so this line stays pretty much the same all the way across. I think we're good. Make sure these two are the same size this way. We're good. There we go with that. See, now these are kind of smashing against each other because they're not straight right here. And I can, like I said, I can take that to my cutter peller and I'm gonna square that up a little bit. And then this side here has a little bit of a gap here. So I'm gonna take that down just a tad. I'm not gonna take it down a lot. There may still be a little bit of a gap there and that's fine with me because I don't wanna to go too far off of the 12 by 12. Okay, so that's okay with me. I'm not gonna stress that. Okay, and then this one's gonna go here. This one's gonna go here. I'm gonna straighten up this edge a little bit. Again, not perfect here, but I'm gonna live with it. Okay, do that. Haven't decided what colors I want to do this in yet. We'll figure that out. Mm, still kind of not happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and just say, okay, and do it. Okay. Sometimes you just got to Allow yourself to not be perfect. And hope that it comes out okay. It doesn't always, but that's okay too. Okay, so that's not bad. It's not gonna bother me. That white line in there is not gonna bother me very much pencil lines because if I don't it's not gonna look the same as everything else another thing you could have done with this one is you could have went ahead and cut the white and then with this area just kind of fussy cut around it like that but I didn't want to I could probably come in with a white pen and accent a little bit better too which would kind of draw your eye away from that interior heart but I really don't think it's gonna matter that much in the long run okay so i think i want to do something with this in a different pattern but something that matches where's my cards my cards my cards all right so let's see what i have here um what do i know i'm not going to use no i don't want yet uh cherry blossoms no i don't want that uh, butterfly kisses flower wishes that's not big enough not big enough okay where you go go with all your hearts the best loves oh okay um hmm. 
don't have that pattern, do I? Oh, yeah, I do, but it's in the solid. So I may just have to use this. Because I don't have it in my little ones. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, so... Oh, wait, that'll work. Okay, let's do this light with this one, and let's forego this one and do this one instead out of the big heart. Ha-ha! Let's see. Hmm. Let's see if that's going to work. Yep. Go. You know what I'm gonna do? I am going to offset this one just a smidge so I can get my H down there. So I'm gonna bring out my magic tool here. My little dude. like so. Okay. Then I'm going to make this a point instead of being rounded. Again, I wasn't perfect on that corner, but that's okay. Also notice when I'm cutting, guys, I'm moving my paper. I'm not moving my scissors. Or if I am moving my scissors, I'm trying to move them as little as possible to get that nice straight line and not a lot of the kind of ridges where you stop and then start again and stop and start again. Okay. Okay, and normally I will tell you not to use or throw in a totally different color into something, but in this case, because I'm going monochromatic, it's going to be okay. Because this pattern is so, so light that it's really not going to play very badly into this. And it's not gonna distract from what I'm doing. I keep throwing my pencil every time I go to get it out of my way and it's disappearing. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oops. Shifted a little bit. That's okay. It's not a big deal. Okay. Again, I like to cut holding a smaller piece of paper, not a larger one. Again, that pattern is so soft, you're not going to see a lot of it. Okay, and ink that again. set. Okay, so with this one, I think I'm going to set it this way. Kind of change up a little bit how I'm doing that. Since I'm doing that that way. Okay. There, there, 
there. Yeah, let's do that. I like that better. All right. Good there, good there, good there. All set. I need my photos. So I had a 4x5, 4x4, 4x5, 4x5. 4 by 4 Okay, so one, so two 4 by 4s one, two, three, four by fives. So I'm going to do a 5 inch cut. And then I'm going to drop that down at 8 inches and 4 inches. That's going to give me my three pieces for that. So we go there, there, there. And then from the last piece, I'm going to do, hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut four inches and then eight and four. And that gives me three four by fours, but I'm not gonna use one of them. Okay, so I'm gonna go here like that and here like that okay now I really like this um, again I'm gonna go ahead and see how it will look if I pop it with blue I may very well not use the blue but we'll, we'll see how that goes okay and I'm gonna use a set a very very thin border so I'm gonna do four and a quarter by five and a quarter. For these, and I'm gonna see if I like it. So it's a really, really thin pop of that blue. It's really subtle. But look at the difference that that makes on this layout. Okay. It really kind of gives that focus point back to the pictures so the pictures are not going to blend down onto this page. I think that's going to make a big difference. Okay, so I need one more four and then two more four. Okay, I'm going to go this way. Okay, so four and a quarter. This way. Five and a quarter. Like so. Okay. sheet of paper but that's okay I don't think I'm gonna get that extra nope all right gotta go get one more sheet of paper for that last one okay so that there and one more sheet of paper. Normally when I cut my photo mats, I don't usually cut bigger than the 4x4, four 4x6. Four, four I usually cut my photo mats down smaller. But in this case, because I wanted to see how this would look, I stuck with the 4x4 four four being solid on the flamingo in this case is the title of that. Okay, see... I like that. I like how that blue is just popping those pictures, but it's so subtle because it's so thin. It really does look nice. So I'm going to go ahead and put those down and come back and do any other further embellishments and everything else to it and show you my final layout. 
Thanks for everybody for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.